So here we are, back continuing with our Tamiya 135 scale M247 Sergeant York. Um, when we last left off, we had completed basic assembly of the hull and the turret, and we did our paint job and our first gloss coat. So it's looking pretty good, I gotta say. Um, we're ready to apply the decals. Now, when I was inspecting the decals, and remember how old this kit is, this kit is easily uh, somewhere between 25 and maybe 40 years old, I don't know. Um, it's an old kit. The decals were already, if we can look at it, we're starting to show signs of cracking and everything. These, I believe, definitely would have fallen apart in the water. So I've already given them a rather um, thick um, covering of gloss lacquer to help hold them together. Um, so this is actually three, uh, I can't remember, three or four light coats all together of Alclad um, uh, clear coat. Let me show you. Gloss clear coat. Um, just to, just as if we were, you know, doing custom decals, this will help keep old decals together pretty decently. Um, we might have to touch up some of the cracks, you know, with paint once they're on, but I'm hoping that this will keep the decals together at least so we can apply them um, and finish this, this build. So first thing we're going to do is, I mean, there's not a lot of decal work on there. You can see there's just a few um, radiation warnings. This goes on the back and a few U.S. stars. Now, unfortunately, because I put this coating, you know, when you, when you do this overcoat, you now have a clear coat over the entire thing. So we have to individually trim out each decal instead of just cutting it and letting it come out of the water. If we would put this in the water, um, basically you'd have one giant decal. So I'm going to um, trim the decals out individually. Nothing exciting to watch, so I'll do that off camera. Um, and then I will apply the decals and then we'll be ready to actually start working on the tracks and the wheels, um, wheels first, so that we can start the basic weathering uh, on this with our with our wash and some uh, panel lining and such. And um, I'll get going with that. Well, unfortunately, those decals were unsavable. Uh, nothing that I did really helped. They were just they were too old and just terrible. So. I got on the computer and I printed up some new ones myself and um, I made extras like I always do just in case so these have been sprayed with clear lacquer overhead over top and um, I'm gonna give them just a little bit more time for this to set really nice but the one thing I didn't I didn't print was that little decal that goes on the rear door. I was doing a lot of research while I was while I was making these ones. I can't find any real resource, any picture of the real thing that actually shows that image on that rear door. Nothing. Um, so I'm not going to put it on. I'm not going to put it there. Uh, if I did want to do that though, I would probably use um, something that just looked very similar from from the spares box I have of spare decals. But we're going to go with the, the standard black stars, the 52 exercise marking, and of course the um, the radio frequency radiation hazard placards that go. Um, and, you know, once, once like I said, this lacquer is, is set just a little bit longer just to make sure it's all good to go. Um, I'll cut these decals out and apply them. And anything we don't use here, of course, will we'll go into the spares. So we'll have some extras probably at the end of it. Um, but just uh, took a little bit extra time. You know, one of those things that happens. That's why it's great to have the skill to make your own decals when you need them. Decals um, went on pretty well. You can see a little little border of where I cut, but when we do the um, you know the final flat they're gonna blend right in they're gonna look totally painted on so I um, went and gave uh, another clear coat over everything 
um, with future again give it time to dry now again this is not exactly what the instructions called for i don't know if you could see the black star over but uh, it's a slightly different black than what we used to paint the camouflage with just like it would have been on the actual real tank um, but we've got the markings for the exercise on so um, and again, this is from a reference picture that I that I found online of the actual um, test exercise, you know, where they actually attempted to use these things. So, you know, the markings are, are a little bit different than than what you saw with the kit instructions, um, mainly in the, the placement of the two big stars um, and the small star on the front of the hull. But... Now that the gloss is all done, uh, it's cured, set, we're ready to move right in to um, some washes and, you know, panel lining and stuff. Then we're going to go and we're going to do a semi-gloss lacquer coat that's going to sort of seal this up a little bit. I'm sorry, a semi-gloss acrylic coat that's going to seal on our panel lining. And then we're going to go and, and do the weathering for this all. So we're gonna use the green brown from MIG for the panel lining and the the wash around various various pieces. We're gonna use a little bit of black inside uh, grates and exhaust and stuff like that, but you'll see that as we go. We're also gonna be doing a little bit of the, um, now this is intended for NATO three-tone camouflage, but it's gonna work pretty well for the colors we have on here. So a little bit of filtering as we go through this. So I'm gonna start with the uh, the green brown to start picking out some edges and everything and uh, ready break. I am, I'm done with the, the uh, first kind of wash with the green brown and it's a subtle look and it's hard to you know with the gloss reflecting all the light from above uh, you can see it's just a subtle panel line wash um, around different raised areas and everything but it, it adds the first layer of life to the whole thing and because of the color choice, it actually is really gonna add and help with the weathering that we're gonna do as we go. So, kind of a long process getting everything done here. Um, and like I said, very subtle in a lot of places, but definitely gonna be worth it when we're all done. Um, especially in these wheels, which, you might not see very well now but you know when it's all done you're gonna it's gonna be very evident so the next step is to give the semi-gloss uh, top coat to all this which is gonna seal in everything we did here um, then um, we're gonna do some filtering with the three-tone camo filter then I'm just gonna add a, a little black inside the engine deck uh, in the grills over there just to add a little bit more depth 
then we are going to then a sec, another you know semi gloss then we're actually going to be ready to um, start with some of the weathering effects that we're going to do and this is going to be this one's going to be a little bit light because you know remember the army was if you if you kept pace of the story of this thing in the first part of the video uh, the army was not willing to risk a lot <laughs> when you know when these things are in the field being tested they weren't going to put them through a whole lot so uh, they didn't go out in big storms in giant mud fields and all that stuff they got dirty but they didn't get really messy so weathering is not going to be obscene on these just uh, some acryl uh, semi-gloss over it T lets me know I've already pre-thinned this in this bottle um, so that's just for me uh, and then you know you'll see the other work as it goes So with, with a semi-gloss, you know, you can see a little bit more of the detailing. Especially here on the sides. You can see how that green-brown wash kind of not only highlights, but kind of sets us up for some of the, you know, dirt and some of the kind of the grime that we're going to see on this thing in field testing it's it's a really good color choice for this particular vehicle right here so here i'm being much more careful where i'm applying the black wash into the engine grill area making sure that we just add depth and not another wash around all of the pieces because that's not what we're doing and it really helps add so I've already kind of done this side and it's still wet so you got a little shininess but when it's you know dry you'll be able to see it really adds that 3d depth like there's something under those pieces even though it's just, you know, more plastic. So, but the whole goal here is not to get in and around all the handles and all that. It's just to put it right inside the louvers of the grills. So, a little different, um, a little more controlled, but same basic principle there technique of you know any other panel wash So that's not the way most people use this as a filter, uh, as a very light little coat 
um, to sort of bring colors together. But uh, you can see it's done it's done some pretty good things for the colors um, in terms of you know as a filter. But when I slosh it on like that, <laughs> um, it it kind of has that that other effect of adding another layer to our weathering. Um, you can see how it dries in some little streaks, and it just so happens to to be a really good um, sort of overall shade of, of dirt and, and streaking and everything so of, you know, for the whole thing. So in addition to, to giving us the filtering effect that it does, um, it also helps just sort of dirty things up in an extra layer. Now we're going to have to, when this is all dried off, we're going to coat this again with uh, another semi-gloss uh, acrylic so that we can continue doing um, some work with, uh, the word is on the tip of my tongue, with enamels um, and some oil based stuff, but uh, this is really going to help it stand out. Again, because we're not going to be doing, you know, some, some of the very heavy weathering that we might do on some other tanks with splashing on mud and everything, so we need these layers to build up that sort of, that story of the use on on board.
we have wheels done. They're on here, but you know, they're poly caps, so we can take them off whenever we want. We've got uh, our return rollers that are ready to position in as well. Now these are not glued in because they basically get glued in and then, and then they're in. So we're all ready for that step. You can see how what we put on has already really, really helped start with the weathering process. Um, so the uh, first wash, you know, panel lines and stuff, and in the grates, um, we've got a little spilled gas, and I put that on first because after we put on the dull coat, we'll put on some some fresh ones, which will give it um, kind of a, a different look. You know, for, we'll have some older spills and some newer spills, but you can see that we've we've got a lot of different textures going on here with the different washes and then the filter. So the filter has done two things for us the way I put it on. It has not only done the filter effect over all the colors, but it has, you know, because I put it on so thick, which uh, some people might have done and some people might not, it has actually started adding different layers to our weathering effects. And if you see, let me zoom in a little bit, uh, you can kind of see how it has started to add just that grimy layer uh, where dirt and stuff would, would build up around a lot of the places that also the... Um, the wash would would build up but you know now we have that kind of dirty look to a lot of different areas settling in crevices and stuff which is why I wanted to use that specific filter on this um, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start um, putting on some pigments and uh, we're gonna choose the ones that we're gonna use um, this by the way has had a second coat of semi-gloss over the whole thing to kind of seal in the effects that we've already done. Um, so I'm going to remove the wheels so that we can start putting the pigment layer in. And I want to be real gentle with this so that it comes off easy. We don't stress out any of the parts. Uh, these polycaps do tend to hold on pretty well sometimes. And from time to time, you actually can get some breakage of the studs there. Let me get all the wheels disassembled again, and then we'll we'll go with um, our pigments and everything for uh, dust layers and stuff like that. To start off with just a little bit of uh, not heavy mud, but just a little bit of splashy mud around, I'm gonna use this right here from MIG. I'm gonna apply it in a, a sort of weird way. Um, I'm going to take some of it with a dropper I'm gonna put it in the tray right here. This is, it's not watery, but it's its not exactly thick either. I'm gonna put some on a brush and I have my airbrush turned down a bit and I'm gonna spray it from the brush with the airbrush onto the uh, the vehicle as kind of just to make some splashity, splishity, splashity marks on there. Um, it's a good technique for getting some light splash marks we, again, we don't want this thing caked. We just want it splashed on. And we are getting splashed mud. Not a lot, just the, the places where they wouldn't be able to keep the vehicle super clean to always look pretty for those people watching the exhibition and everything. Oh, and we had a fall, but that's okay. Um, and I'm going to continue this uh, around the front and the sides, not so much the back because you got to think of the way that mud splashes. It's going to splash as the, as the vehicle's going in that sort of direction. So this is mostly going to be under here. Ooh, I forgot to take off some of the uh, return rollers. Good thing I remembered that. So, um, give me a minute and then you'll see the result. While we're waiting for the mud to uh, dry up and let us work on it again, um, the last real big project we have to do for, you know, subassembly here is tracks. Now, I have pre-sprayed these with a uh, tester's dull coat. I had it over here to show you, there it is. 
um, just regular old lacquer, right? Just to give a, a coating on top of the rubber so that whatever effects we put on here, it gives us something to hold on to because regular old enamels and stuff do not like to hold on to this very well. So this will give us uh, a, an acrylics too, by the way. So this spray lacquer just prepares the rubber track for everything else we're gonna do with it. But like I said, I really like the color of the track. It's um, already kind of a good gunmetal color. We got our spare tracks and I just cut off some links because we're gonna prepare them for the stowage. Uh, and what I'm gonna actually do here is, it's gonna be pretty simple. I'm just going to um, actually connect some of the links, some of these spare links by snipping, snippity doo da, snippity day, and now these are going to be, uh, we don't have to like be perfect with these because once they're all weathered up and stuff it's going to hide a lot of the detail. Snip for you, sir. The way I want to have these carried, we're just going to put them together in a larger section. So, There we go. And I'll do the rest of the trimming that needs to be done once they're glued together. And then press it down and that will be a track piece that we can hang up there when we're done. I'm gonna do the same thing to another one. We're gonna leave one double alone and then I'm just going to paint it in a gunmetal color I'm not going to prime it or anything because we're, I mean, it's not going to be handled. We're not going to mess with it too much. I'm just going to paint it gunmetal and then give it also a coat of lacquer um, so that we can begin working on it the same way that we would work on the other stuff. And then we'll get to work on weathering the tracks up while we're still waiting for the wheels because the weathering with, with um, we're going to use a combination of these three pigments. As, whoop, as well as the track wash we're going to do too, but this is going to be on the tracks and the vehicle, so it makes sense to uh, get the tracks going now while we wait for the vehicle to be ready for its pigments as well, you know. Uh, I'm going to paint the tracks with Gunmetal Gray from Vallejo. It's pretty good, and it sticks pretty well without a primer, especially on projects like this. Um, get them all ready, and then uh, you know what I just realized too? We've got the wrong pattern. They give us the wrong pattern. Extra track links to go on uh, with these tracks. So you know what we're going to have to do? We are, look at the track pads here versus the older style track pads. We're going to have to make sure that all of them are positioned in so that nobody can see, but this is what the kit gives us. And the truth is I don't have any external, I don't have any extra tracks for this. So it's all right, we'll make do. Mistake with the kit, but we'll make do. While everything else over there is drying, um, so these are coated and ready to go. We're gonna use a little bit of track wash and a little bit of rust streaks. And um, I'm gonna be very careful with this bowl of dirt I made. And I wanna, I wanna thin this down even more, actually. I'm going to use a little bit of both. And if I don't get the exact right proportions, you know, for the whole thing, it's not that bad. It's okay. So we'll add a little bit of the darkness of the rust streaks. some of the track wash which is already pretty washy but I like it to be just a hair thinner 
so just a little bit and so as we're doing this again remembering the history of the vehicle these m48 hulls were sitting around in storage tracks and all for a really long time before they decided to make this vehicle um so there would be a lot now they probably would have tried to refurbish a little bit but there would be a lot of rust on the tracks um, so it's you know this is a part where heavy works and even if they decided to clean it up a little bit these tracks with the carbon type steel that they're made of will re-rust in a heartbeat um, because you know they can take them in to the uh, the work bay and everything they can take it into depot level maintenance and they can they can sandblast it off and everything but it, it's the exposed steel on these things once once rust gets in there it's not like a surfaced rust it, it gets in there just because of the nature of the steel that they use um, that's another one of the reasons that they have to replace but it's not just wear and tear it's also you know the, the factor that they they're uh, you know a high strength carbon steel so they are they're going to get rusty and gross um you know so i want this wash to be a very heavy type wash i want it to be very rusty i, I want it to be very um I want the color to be very rich because these are very old tracks and i know it's it's looking very very brown rust right now but we're gonna we're gonna work on it a little bit once we get the base on there so and this is an area this is a time where i really do normally try to wear gloves i just didn't think of it right now because this gets your hands filthy with the rusty wash just about done we're gonna go back to the rust streaks and we're just gonna kind of lay a little bit over the rusty wash which kind of gives you a uh, almost a, a 3d ish not a 3d but it really gives you that um, true rusty look when you've got a base layer of rust and then some kind of thicker rust on it and it's almost like we're dry brushing but not really dry brushing we don't want this everywhere we just want to have little bits of it to kind of stand out so even that's too much right there for what we're doing That's good. Just little tiny bits. On top of the wash. I'm not gonna mess with the, uh, the uh, track guides because they're gonna get dry brushed. Um, they tend to get a lot of the rust knocked off as they go through the wheels and the sprockets and the guide rollers and everything but this is gonna give us a pretty nice effect you know what I'm trying to do is do the weathering we can do since we're we got to be kind of conservative with with certain weathering on this so what we'll do is we'll we'll really hit up tracks as best we can and some other stuff and you see this is all just really random to place a little extra rust here and there not a lot just a little bit I'll flip it over doing kind of the same stuff on this side. I 
and to this point I, I don't I'm not really sure which part of the tracks are going to be up or down or whatever so we're just going to hit lots of little random parts kind of make sure that we get a little bit all over the place I know that this is pretty much these ends that connect they're going to be down I know that so you can kind of estimate which is going to be the up part and what's going to show and what's not but I have given our our washes and our lots of rust time to dry. We got some pretty rusty track going on, but it's looking good. So now I'm gonna do some dry brushing um, of the the guide teeth um, and along the outside a little bit with some gun metal. I, to this point, actually have no idea which set of tracks is going on which side. So I'm just, you know, I'm working on both sides of them as if it could go on either side. I just, I just don't even know. And here is, I hope it's showing up on camera. I don't know if it is or not. But there's the guides and now we'll do just a little bit especially on the insides of where the connector pins, you know, these areas go in, because they're going to come in contact with the metal on the sprockets. Um, so a lot more worn than the outsides, which are really just, you know, they might come in contact with some rocks and stuff, but not as much as the insides here. And not not a whole lot though. We don't we don't want to undo all the good rustiness that we just did. Okay. All right. I'm gonna do that one, and then I'm gonna do a little bit on these. Are gonna be kind of a bit more these spare tracks because they haven't been as much in contact with with wet gross ground. Um, but they're still going to be pretty rusty just from this carbon steel being out in the air and stuff <clears throat> and the environment so but you'll see that a lot of that rust in between is still going to show up there's there's more metallic look but it's still down in the crevices and everything you have the rust where it would build up okay so this part's going to take a little while we're going to use some dark wash and we're just going to fill in some of the recesses in between track links and everything. Um, I'm gonna do this one actually, rather than, you know, how sometimes I just do things all willy-nilly. Um, I'm gonna use a fine brush, cause I don't want to, this stuff is very dark and it does tend to stain anything it touches. Um, it's a perfect color though, for going in between the different track links and everything and really uh, highlighting the areas in between I might thin it down just a little bit but especially you know getting in those areas yeah I'm gonna thin it down just a little bit and getting in these recesses and everything and all that uh, it's dirty it's grimy it's gonna be pretty good but this is going to be a very long process of, of washing in between every track link on both sets of tracks um, and getting it just right so that you know it really separates them um, and here's what it's gonna look like on the front it definitely needs to be thinned down a little bit but... and then when that's all done we have the joy of painting every single track pad all around so I'm going to be doing the track wash on all of these pieces, including our spares, because that's going to really help give some detail to the spare tracks, um, since there's not a lot going on there, um, you know, and but you see why I need to be, you know, very careful with where I'm laying it in rather than just sloshing it on like, like a, a typical wash to really get it where it needs to be. But this is gonna take me a while, so I'm gonna do this off camera and you'll see the finished result. That took a little while 
but look at the look at the depth look at the depth we've got in the tracks now okay worth it so here comes the next giant pain in the ass all right so i'm gonna give these a spray of of the same semi-gloss and then i am going to use some nato black just some Vallejo nato or model air nato because i like it it's a good rubber color and it's going to differentiate the rubber on the tracks from the rubber on the wheels and i have to paint every single pad on both sides um and that is going to be a huge pain but it's got to happen it's got to happen so a uh, quick spray of semi-gloss followed by the track pads oh i hate when it comes to the wheels and tracks on tanks but it's got to happen it's got to get done so it's going to get done so but i'm really pleased with the effect so far on the tracks because um, that really is gonna give uh, again well i'm doing everything i can since we can't just slosh this up with a ton of mud and a ton of dirt we're gonna give it some dirt but um we're really gonna put a lot of the the focus um onto the running gear you know he did really nice paint job we're gonna do some good finishing on the lenses and, and the optics i also did by the way just a very light, you can probably hardly even tell, a little bit of dry brushing on the gun barrels um, with the uh, the gunmetal paint. Anyway, next time you see these tracks, they will have some very nice um, rubber track pads on them. And then we'll be ready to go. Okay, now this, this is a pain. Um, I'm, I'm cheating a little bit on the bottom because I figured out where pads were going to be seen and where they weren't and painted accordingly so yeah that was a pain not gonna lie but now we're finally ready to start doing a little bit of our dirt here so I'm going to choose an appropriate brush that I'd like to use for it and I think this one looks good and Now this is why we're just basically going to see mostly the faint color and and you know all of the some people might say it wasn't even worth doing the wash in between the tracks and everything but you know we know it's there we know it was done um, and I think it's gonna it, I think it is gonna add some a little something to the end of it you know but this is just gonna fill out out of all the space and we'll build up maybe a little bit a, a little layering we're gonna do one side at a time so and you know this is so when we're looking at the tank so this is gonna be the bottom of the track so there's a mythical midpoint right well no not mythical but so there's a midpoint right here where it will be the top and it'll wrap around on the bottom so we're going to put it on a little bit heavier towards the bottom side where it'll be sitting and so we'll factor in you know kind of the the porters. And we'll kind of brush a little bit sort of off the track pads themselves into the areas between them and cake it up there. Now, let's get our fixative, our fixer. A lot of people will just do this the whole way. Some people will also take just a dropper. And you could do like that, but it's... I feel like doing it like this is, is a little bit wasteful, but I've seen people do kind of like that along. 
especially on the bigger kind of areas. I feel like that's a little bit wasteful with the fixative. Because this works just fine. Now where I might do the droppers is on the ends, actually, where we have kind of the, the piles, you know, where we want them to be really built up. So we're going to let that sit. In the meantime, we've got all the, the actual tank. And I'm going to use a, a little bit of a smaller brush to put this stuff in because we want it to be kind of the dirt to have gotten into these areas where, you know, out in the field, dirt would collect. So I'm just going to brush it into some of these areas where dirt and stuff might collect. Crevices and nooks and crannies and stuff. Especially where a crew might be around, walking around, doing stuff. Around the driver's hatch and around his periscopes. I'm not looking for a dusty kind of effect up on the tank yet. So we're just looking for dirt kind of in crevices and everything as this thing's been driving along, you know, doing the exercise. You could, you could get some dusty effect on there. That's not bad, it's, but that's, you know, I like to do that at the end with pastels because they kind of sort of rub into the surface and just a different a different kind of effect um, same kind of principle though works out in the end the same so now as I go I'm gonna uh, just drop the fixative in place on the areas where we've already got the pigment. Make sure they don't go anywhere. Make sure they stay where we want them. Basically, this is why there's so many different layers of. Uh, acrylics and everything to protect you know in between so all this stuff is basically enamel based um, which is great because you can protect all the other layers under it you know with the acrylic coats they just they tend to build up really fast as you're going so I'm gonna get to work I'm gonna do the same technique across basically everything we see here and then I'll show you what we got 
As we move along, I'm gonna start what's gonna be the final top coat for the vehicle. Um, it's gonna be a matte from uh, Galleria from Windsor & Newton. Um, this is amazing flat. I mean, it is the flattest flat I've ever used. Uh, I've got wheels attached. Now these ones are, the road wheels uh, are removable. The idler rollers here are glued in, but everything is looking very, very dirty. Not crazy, just dirty from being out in the field. And I'm happy with the effect that we've got going on. Um, the last thing we're gonna have to do to this is, to the vehicle itself, is um, we're gonna mat it, and then we're gonna do some periscopes and everything. And then we're gonna put a little bit of exercise-related stowage on top. Then we're gonna call the whole thing good. Um, actually, now that I think about it, I just wanna put a little bit more pigment on the sides here. I realize we totally neglected these areas and they would definitely get some dirt. I have some stowage pieces here from, uh, I think it's actually three different Tamiya accessory kits, but look what I found. Some actual M48A5 slash M60 track pieces for our extra tracks. So we can get rid of these inaccurate ones that came with the kit, the older M48 tracks. Uh, and I'll start again. These are individual link tracks that I put together. So this is the US uh, military accessories kit. Um, and then this is some of these um, rucksacks come from like the US modern military accessories. Um, this comes from the kit. This is a 40 millimeter ammunition can, which is perfect. Um, the large size, there's also a small size. Um, that's you know holds 40 millimeter grenades for like the mark 19 and everything um, This is a Smaller pouch that comes from the old allied accessory allied vehicles accessory kit We've got a gas can and plus, you know the stuff that's already coming from the kit It's gonna we're just gonna have a, a little bit of stowage to go on here um, Just to represent some extra stuff So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prime in white so that we can get some really nice good colors um, And I'm gonna do some contrasting colors on everything basically um, all kinds of OD greens and, and stuff and dark greens, as you'd see. And uh, just finish them off with some contrast and everything. And um, they'll get a, a kind of a, a different flat finish than the vehicle just to not make them look like it's just one dull coat over the whole thing. Um, I'll use a uh, Model Master um, or Tester's uh, lacquer dull coat on them. Um, make them look a little bit different, you know, but I'm gonna get to doing these and I'll do these off-camera again Nothing nothing exciting to see here. We'll just roll right through it But you'll see them again when we're putting the stowage on the vehicle I'm just thrilled that I found these tracks so they'll actually be the correct ones Yay time to put tracks together. So um, We're gonna give them another dusting um, Just lightly when they're all done, but vehicle is ready to receive some tracks so what I'm gonna do is I'm where's my super glue the way I've always done these is um, I'm gonna give them a little super glue right there I've already kind of scraped off all paint and stuff that we have there to let the glue adhere and then I'm gonna melt the ends so this can get a little bit messy but really want to make sure that these hold well just get them squoze And I still have just a little bit of uh, uh, matte varnish in the airbrush because after this is done, I'm going to want to give the area, where did it go? There it is, a little bit of spray because, you know, you have the super glue that squeezes out a little bit and makes it a little bit shiny and we don't want that. So that'll be like the last little step. All right, just going to use a little torch right there. Set it on low to heat my blade up. Get it hot enough to melt these little nubs. And seal that track down. Now that's why I put these directly on the bottom because they usually look kind of messy. I have not gotten these to look neat and clean not one single time in my life. Um, but that will hold them all nicely. And now we'll give them one last little spray on the edges there where any uh, super glue might have squeezed out. 
And now these tracks, they'll hold. They'll hold well enough to, to put them on. Let's see. So this is the exterior. It's the only painted one side. And is this removable? On one side it's removable, and on another side it's not because of the way the pin broke off. So just want to make sure that the end that goes on the bottom is on the bottom. Guide horns are in the track. Okay. And we'll grab a sprocket. Put that in there. And I like to position this right underneath one of the road wheels just to help it sit nice. And then we'll use the idler up front to stretch it and help it sit where it needs to sit. guide horns in there and our first track is let's get it in there. Uh, a little bit loose but we can glue that down if we need to um, you can apply a few drops of glue to the track to help it snug down but that's the way the track comes out of the box. Uh, so just a real life, um, you know, to let you know how these things work in armor in real life. So do you see how on this idler wheel, this would also be the tensioner wheel, and there's another little pneumatic thing over there. What they would do is there's always a certain amount of proper tension that an armored crew is supposed to adjust that with, and that is adjustable. And sometimes they measure it with a two by four or there's an actual measurement of how far that track is supposed to be able to flex above the uh, return rollers on the top. And that's how you adjust track tension on a real armored vehicle. You adjust how far forward or back that idler wheel goes. So if this was a real armored vehicle, we would need to adjust our idler wheel uh, forward to basically stretch the track out a little bit and um, increase the tension on it. Here's your armored lesson for the day. For right now, I'm going to leave it I'm gonna leave it alone though. Obviously this is just a little bit too big. But like I said, we can just glue it down. Now, if I really wanted to, I could cut some links uh, and sew it together, but I'm not going to go that far on this one. Um, it's just a loose track. This is why people sell aftermarket tracks for these things. Because the original ones are often, these rubberized ones, um, not great. But it does sit nicely on the tracks. That's a shame. If these were link and link, they'd be easy. Wow, that's a lot of tension that needs to be adjusted on this vehicle. Take a look at that. I decided I have to fix this track. I just can't, I just can't let it go. So I did some measuring and I figured out that uh, two links is about what it's going to take to uh, properly fix this. So I'm going to start sewing with some heavy duty thread and a big heavy duty needle. And first I'm gonna put uh, one stitch in the middle of the track and um, oh, I don't want it going through the guide horn. I want it right next to it. And it's gonna be it's gonna be a process because you know you it's gonna be a lot of stitches to get this sewn together so it doesn't look like a, a sewn together rubber track. Um, but when it's all said and done, it's going to hold together and it's gonna have the right contours and uh, I'm going to I'm going to get this thing with the right bend around it to fit. I just I cannot accept I can't accept it just being all loosey goosey and not looking right. Um, and you'll find out at the end of the build why I have to I have to just get this one perfect. So, I'm going to work on sewing this track together. Little minor track suturing and we've got some decent fitting tracks. Okay, nice. So, we are finally ready to mount a turret onto this vehicle. And we have a dirty in the field M247 Sergeant York. Dirty, not filthy, not running in the mud. 
um, but it has the look we're going for for a vehicle undergoing some testing. I need to fix up some of the tracks a little bit as I was working. Um, some of the stuff kind of flaked off a little bit, um, and I'll fix that up. But um, in terms of the vehicle, what we're ready for now is to paint some periscopes, and I got to check my references as to what color as to what colors. Now, if you're familiar with armored vehicle um, periscopes. Now, not the old school ones that are just literally periscopes, but new ones that have like anti-reflective coatings and anti-laser coatings. They've got some really cool colors going. So in order to paint the colors, um, you know, properly, I'm gonna use um, some prismatic color shift paints from Green Stuff World and Vallejo, and they, they come out really, really cool. Uh, I'm not sure exactly, I know that, that the main periscope, the main, um, you know, viewport periscope, it's kind of a purplish color, and so, I'll probably use something like this for it. And there's a bluish one, a greenish one. I'm not sure, I gotta, I gotta check exactly what the references are to make sure I get them accurate. Um, but I'll do that and then uh, give it a nice gloss over the viewports and periscopes. And then just put a little bit of dirt, you know, right in the corners of those. I've picked out colors for the, the main optics. Um, we're gonna do, this one's called Toxic Purple. And I'm not sure if it's going to pick up the shifting on the camera here in this angle, but um, it's a purple to goldish green color. I don't know how to make it shift on camera um, for the main. And then this is a green to red for the sight over there. And then uh, for the regular vision blocks, um, we're just going to use, uh, you know, I haven't decided yet, but you'll find out. Um, what's really important though when using these kinds of um, paints is to put it over a black base. So I've just got a semi-gloss black. It's a little more glossy than black, than semi-gloss, but that's good. That, that helps out. Um, so that'll work really well. Uh, so, man, I wish you could see what I'm seeing as, as, it, as it shifts. I don't know if it's picking it up or not, but um, they're really cool. They're really, really cool. I have a bunch of these little 1 44th scale um, YF23s that I use as bases to check out all the different colors that they do. I should do a whole video on those one day. So I'm going to paint these in um, very carefully and very slowly for the optics. Um, they usually, you know, when you're when they airbrush great, they also brush on, but they, they take several coats to really get a good deep effect when you're brushing. So this is going to be kind of a long process. It's probably going to take me about an hour of, of small, thin, light coats to get them built up to where we can actually see it. So this will take a little bit. We're almost done with this though. We're getting closer and closer to finishing and as I'm putting on some stowage here, I just wanted to point out, um, I'm making some straps to continue the backpack straps here out of some cut to me a masking tape. So it doesn't look like they're just glued on, which they are, but you know, we've got um, the straps on the packs that are actually uh, strapping them on to the vehicle, right? And then they're resting on the uh, some of the other pieces of stowage. Just as I go, um, we've got our lenses done. And in real life, you can see them color shift a little bit, but again, the camera angle is not letting me see it so much. Headlights, we've got some taillights done. Fixed up the tracks a little bit. We're really just moments away from finishing this up. We need a mat fi uh, finish on the stowage once I get it all loaded up, but I'm so happy to almost be done with this. Um, you know, there's been large work breaks in between different steps on it, but once I'm finished putting the stowage on, it's pretty much gonna be finished and we can take some, some final looks at what we've got, building this really right out of the box. Just like the only accessories here, the only things not out of the box, um, different from, from that construction or fixing the tracks and putting on our, our stowage pieces. I almost forgot about our radio antenna, our standard six foot UHF antenna um, converted to 135 scale. It is about 52 millimeters, give or take. So about EA big. Um, I'm using some plastic rod. So we're gonna have to uh, cut, or uh, sorry, drill um, some slightly larger holes to fit these in there but they're gonna go right on in there. And the angle that they're at keeps them out of the way of the radar. 
We finally, after a long time, I don't know how long this thing's been on my workbench. We have a finished M247 Sergeant York. We have our stowage. I decided I was going to take the tracks since they were originally flexible, workable tracks. I thought a cool way to show them, um, display the, you know, the way they came in, and also was to sort of bend them around one of those packs. You can still see the details on the pack, but then, you know, you have the tracks up there, um, and I made another strap out of to me a masking tape so we have our stowage going on we have all of our light weathering but you know showing just a dirty day in an exercise cannon that can elevate just about to about to yeah a full 90 degrees um, unfortunately on the real vehicle that would mess with the radar very much but you know lets you display the vehicle however you want. What I didn't do and I'm toying with is a lot of exhaust staining um, coming out of there, but uh, I'm not gonna do that now because you know the vehicle didn't were they weren't used all that much. I think that the detailing tells the story of a vehicle that that was uh, used but not in the way that a normal armored vehicle would get used to tell the story of, of how the army was very selective with how these vehicles would be allowed to be used in the field for the one time they were allowed to be in the field and be tested out. So um, just enough weathering to show what we wanted to show. You know, it's it's really. I mean, I think there was an Academy one uh, one thirty five scale kit that was out there, but it, I'm pretty sure it, it was just licensed from to me anyway. The molds, so it's the you know it's it's the one option for a kit uh, in this scale, and it's just I, there's not a lot of aftermarket options for this kit or anything. There just there never was a whole lot of interest in this vehicle it didn't it didn't spend a lot of time in service it never really got to deploy or or serve in any kind of operation it was a very very failed experiment in in modern u.s air defense artillery um, i really enjoyed doing the detailing on it i enjoyed knowing the history of this thing and it, it is a decent kit. You know, the problem is you have this modern tooling and modern production kit with the turret, but then they rely on this very old and rather tired bottom uh, hull from the M48 kit, um, which, you know, I mean, and, and that's exactly what the vehicle was too. That's exactly what the vehicle did. Unfortunately, um, you know, you have uh, some real stark contrast in, in the pieces and how it works and how it goes together and everything else but uh, here we are now um, with regards to why I wanted to put some real time into detailing this so I have a you know I've mentioned a couple times a much larger more successful channel um, that's a totally different subject but one of my favorite things to do on that channel is do giveaways for subscribers and um, I just I love it I love putting things in people's hands when I know they're going to appreciate it and I, you know, I don't have a lot of storage room around here. So there is, um, and, and I fully intend as this channel grows to, to do giveaways of, you know, kits, completed projects, tools, whatever. But for right now, there is one um, viewer, subscriber on both my channels who has been an absolutely huge supporter, um, not only of my original channel, but since day one when I started this, there is not a single video that goes by that there is not at least one comment i know that every every chat every video that has a like is from him um and there's usually more than one comment on each video each and every video that goes by um and he goes by good old boy 76 uh, and he is just an awesome um upbeat kind of guy and he has been supporting what i do on youtube for years and uh you know I hadn't planned this originally when putting this together, but I just, I have a feeling that this is a project that he is really going to appreciate and like. So as, as the first giveaway item, the you know, 
The first thing I, I want to put into someone's hands on this channel, this M247 is going to go to Good Old Boy 76. I hope you guys have enjoyed the process and the history lesson on this awesomely terrible, terrible military vehicle and period of U.S. military history. It's a shame they had to give uh, such such an honorable soldier's name to such a terrible vehicle in the history of the U.S. Army, but it is a cool-looking thing and uh, had a lot of fun doing it. So I welcome your comments, your criticism, um, your ideas, uh, whatever you have to say about it. And for those of you out there building your own, keep building them and build them well. And I will be back real soon with another project.